Good morning. I'm Dr. John Downing. I'm talking to you from the United States. I want to talk this morning about ways of correcting presbyopia, primarily with cataract surgery. Presbyopia is the scourge of middle age. Uh, generally, for most of us, it's the first reminder that we're getting older when we notice that we can't hold things out far enough to be able to see them very well at near. At this point, low myopes have an advantage. They can take off their glasses for near and just use them for distance. Once you're presbyopic, some myopia is a benefit. And uh, if you are in your 40s or later, I think you probably would agree that you didn't really think presbyopia was a big deal until it happened to you. Then it becomes a very big deal usually. We've tried many treatments. There have been ocular surgical procedures, ciliary body expansion to uh, increase the length of the eye a little bit, corneal inlays of several types. Nothing has worked very well. I also have tried multifocal eczema corneal treatments. Those have not worked very well to this point. Most of us just end up using reading glasses. And if you're emetropic and have been for your 45 or 50 years, you don't have any idea how much trouble presbyopia is until your arms start getting too short if you have any kind of near work. If, if you're not emetropic, you're going to go ahead and have to get bifocal or multifocal glasses. Uh, if you're very nearsighted, a lot of patients in the United States at least wear contact lenses and many of them, once they become presbyopic, will use monovision, where they correct their dominant eye for distance, and the near eye will undercorrect it to leave some myopia, and that works very well for many patients, doesn't for everybody. The most recent and probably the best overall for many patients is multifocal intraocular lenses. Uh, they keep improving. They have advantages and disadvantages, uh, but they are becoming more workable. Okay, eventually most of us develop cataracts. And it's now possible for us to give many cataract patients good functional near and distance vision with cataract surgery and intraocular lens replacement. Multifocal glasses work fine for many people. A lot of patients do not mind wearing glasses, but they don't work well for some people, particularly farmers, people who work out in the rice paddies. Glasses are a real problem. Each way we have currently of correcting presbyopia has strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the, uh, we're talking now about multifocal intraocular lenses. Uh, what we have available in the U.S. are pretty limited compared to what most of the rest of the world has. Uh, we have the Restore, which is uh, apodized, they call it bifocal. A Technus has a diffractive multifocal, and AMO has an extended focus lens, which they call the Symphony. And we have only recently been able to use panoptics, trifocal lenses. It's the first trifocal lens that has been approved in the United States. I know from reading the literature, there are a number of trifocals that are being used in different parts of the world, but our government's been a little slow to approve them. And the other correct way that we can correct is monovision after cataract surgery. And when you're considering cataract surgery, you need to consider each patient's individual visual needs. Do they need to see well mostly at distance, at intermediate, or near? Now, most of us would like to have at least some useful vision at all distances. Have to ask people, do they mind wearing glasses? Can they, do they have glasses available? And are glasses practical in their occupation? Uh, if people have to work out in the hot sun a lot, they have a lot of problems. Okay, you can correct presbyopia in some ways with monofocal lenses. We've had monofocal lenses for about 60 years. They constantly improve them bit by bit. 
They've many had many changes in design. Um, basically, there, there are those with spherical optics and those that have aspheric optics. Also, lenses that are designed to be placed in the anterior chamber or in the uh, ciliary sulcus or in the capsular bag. And monofocal lenses give you good, sharp focus, focus at a, their focal point. But about 10% of them have some glare or dysphotopsias. However, if you ask them, people with cataracts have dysphotopsias too, particularly glare. Almost all patients postoperatively need glasses some or all of the time if both eyes are focused for distance with monofocal lenses. I'll talk a little bit about what uh, presbyopic lenses that we have available in the US. The crystal lens uh, was, has been around for a good number of years. Uh, it's monofocal. It uh, is said to be pseudo accommodative by moving in the eye. It has a hinge. However, there's little or no uh, near distance change in most patients. So it's not being used a whole lot. We have a variety of multifocals. Uh, they are all apodized, it's called, or they have uh, different uh, focal points by having little ridges on them to, and they restore and technus both are uh, basically bifocal lenses. Uh, we have the panoptics, which is now a trifocal lens, and we have the extended range of focus lenses, which are the technical, uh, the trade name in the States is the symphony. The symphony uh, works by cor correcting some chromatic aberration, uh, works well generally distance and near, I'm sorry, distance and intermediate. It does not give as good near vision as the bifocal or the trifocal lenses generally. This is just a picture of the crystal lens showing the hinges which were designed hopefully to flex forward to change the anterior chamber effective depth. It works fairly well in high powers, does not work well at all in low powers. Okay, I'll occasionally use a, a crystal lens in patients with media or retina problems, uh, but they almost all still need reading glasses to read small print. With the crystal lens, it generally works best to aim for Plano in the dominant eye, but make them a little bit nearsighted, somewhere around minus three quarters of the diopter in their non-dominant eye. You can consider those with early dry AMD or soft drusen uh, with people with superficial corneal dystrophies or other media problems because they are a monofocal lens and you get away with from the aberrations and dysphotopsies you get with multifocal lenses. All the lenses that we have in the States now that are multifocal lenses use diffractive optics for multifocality. They divide the incoming light into multiple wave fronts with small steps on the optic surface. It can be designed to produce two or three sharp focal points by wave front interference. They all lose a significant amount of light. You always get circles around uh, lights, which most people adapt to or don't notice after a while. Uh, something you need to know is that the multifocal lenses have a posted power, but their effective ad in the eye is about 20% lower than stated. So that's, for instance, if the posted power is three diopters, the effective power in the eye is about 2.4 to 2.5. And both Alcon and Technus, which are the major companies we have available, have effective ads of three, 250, or two. The extended range of focus lens, EFIOL, is uh, the Symphony, and that lens gets generally good distance and intermediate vision. Um, typically, people still need reading glasses for very small print, depends on how much they do it near, and they still get the multifocal aberrations of rings around lights and some glare. 
Now, all the multifocal lenses or contacts have some loss, loss of contrast, sensitivity, sharpness, and loss of effective light. They all have rings around light. They all have some glare. Fortunately, most people adapt to those. Their brain stops noticing that usually after several months, but not always. On the left, this shows you the sharpness of focus at distance with a monofocal lens. On the right is with a multifocal at distance and things are just a little bit fuzzy. And most people adapt to that and don't particularly notice it. Many multifocal patients read 2020 distance and near and are very happy with them. The only trifocal lens that we have available, as I said earlier, is the Alcon Panoptics. We've only had it available for a few months. Uh, it has good distance, intermediate, and near vision in most patients. I know that a lot of you have other lenses available uh, outside the US, and there are some experimental lenses which do accommodate, but none of them that I'm aware of has made it to market. Most people are not all that impressed with vision after they do, you do their first eye with a multifocal lens. But usually they get a lot of improvement after the second eye is done and they can focus together. And you need to stress that their vision can improve for six months or longer as their brain adapts. We call it neural adaptation. We're not sure what happens, but it's real. Okay, when would you might want to use a multifocal lens. Good patients are those who, one, hate to wear glasses or don't have glasses available, have reasonable expectations. They don't expect perfect vision. They know they'll have some aberrations like circles around lights. And you want to stress that they will decrease your need for glasses, but you still may need glasses at times. The best patients to start with by far are hyperopes. Hyperopes don't see well at any distance without correction, and they are thrilled to be able to see even reasonably well distance and near without glasses. You have to have patients that either have less than half a diopter of corneal cylinder, or you can treat it so that they end up postoperatively with, with less than a half, or they get unacceptable blur usually. You want patients who have normal corneas, medias, and maculas. Want a normal tear film. Dry eyes are a major problem in post-op complaints. If you miss dry eyes and are not treating them, they will not usually get very good vision. The big problem is that they're expensive and many people cannot afford them. Okay, who should you not do multifocal lenses in? People with corneal problems, dystrophies, anterior, posterior, keratoconus, form frust keratoconus, pellucid, moderate to severe dry eye, or if they have more than a half an octave corneal cylinder, unless you can correct it. If they have any retinal problems that can decrease vision, early macular degeneration, pre-retinal membranes, if they're diabetic with background diabetic retinopathy or edema, or if they have cystoid macular edema for any reason. Low myopes generally are not happy with multifocal lenses. In the range of a minus one to a minus three, they are used to just not using glasses for most things, for most people, and using glasses for distance for things like driving. They won't get as good vision postoperatively with a multifocal lens at near as they are used to. And most of them want to be left as low myops postoperatively. So you need to ask low myops, are you happy with the vision you have? Do you mind wearing glasses for distance? And if they don't, I'll generally aim pretty much what they were preoperatively so that they end up about that postoperatively. If you make them focused for distance in both eyes, they will not like you. They will be unhappy and uh, it's not a good thing. They have zonular bag defects, pseudo exfoliation, any kind of bag problems like that. You should 
generally avoid them. The lenses sometimes won't center well. And you need to avoid demanding or picky patients, particularly patients who are engineers or uh, professional folks. Now let's talk a little bit about monovision with intraocular lenses. You can get fair to good distance in your vision if you do, uh, target the dominant eye, Plano to a minus a half. I almost always target the dominant eye to about minus a half with monofocal lenses. The reason is our predictions are getting better, but we can still only get 80 some percent within plus or minus a half a diopter of predicted and you do not want patients to end up hyperopic postoperatively. They have to wear glasses or contacts all the time, and we can do a lot better now. Uh, for regular monovision, you target the non-dominant eye of between minus 150 and two. They effectively have a diopter or so of depth of field, so you can get uh, the effect of about two and a half diopters or so if, of near ed, particularly with good light. You have to discuss the pros and cons pre-op, uh, that you can generally get good distance and intermediate vision. Uh, people who have used monovision with contacts generally like it postoperatively, but they often are gonna need bifocal correction for driving to get a little better depth perception at distance. Uh, or at night, and it helps if they both focus together for prolonged near work. And again, contact lenses, lens wearers who've used and like a monovision generally do better with that than they do multifocals. So ask anyone who's myopic, who's wearing contact lenses, have you had one eye focused for near and one eye focused for distance? and the larger majority in the United States at least have. And that's what, and if they're happy with it, keep them there. Okay, so what kind of vision can you get with monovision? Uh, there's called mini monovision, which is about a diopter of myopia in the non-dominant eye. Uh, usually can get about, uh, 6.6 six or 20.20 20 for distance and about 20.40 for near, uncorrected. Uh, full monovision can usually get 20 to 25 distance and near uncorrected. May not ever need to use glasses, but many do wear glasses part-time for distance, like for driving. Mini monovision. I frequently target the dominant eye at about a minus a half and the non-dominant eye at minus 75 to a minus one. Now, if you do not explain why you're doing it and demonstrate it post-operatively that they see well at near with one eye and much better at distance with the other, uh, they'll think you just didn't know what you were doing. But if you demonstrate that both eyes together, they have a much better range of vision and uh, generally don't have to wear reading glasses nearly as much. I have had personal experience with cataract surgery and a little over the, a year ago, uh, I got to the point where I was getting terrible glare at night. Uh, I wanted to go with multifocal lens, but I had a problem with my cornea. I had some anterior and posterior corneal dystrophy and moderate to severe dry eyes for many years. Uh, I didn't think I was a good candidate for multifocal intraocular lens with that. I had tried monovision with contacts, didn't really like it. Uh, I did want some near vision, so I decided on mini monovision. Sorry, let's go back. And I have been happy with it. I'll explain that a little bit more in a few minutes. Now, if you're doing a preoperative workup and trying to decide which, go with, which way to go with people, uh, particularly for multifocal lenses, you need to have patients, whether you have a good history, 
reasonable expectations, look for dry eye and lid problems. You have to do very careful biometry. Uh, for multifocal lenses, you need to be able to use uh, laser measurements, IOL Master or LensStar in the States. Uh, Applanation A scan is not adequate for cal calculating multifocal lenses. You will end up with a lot of them who are significantly myopic because of corneal indentation. Uh, you can use immersion uh, A scan, and that is adequate enough, probably need to do topography, evaluate how much corneal astigmatism or irregularities they have. Uh, if you think they have a retinal problem, it's a good idea if you can do a macular OCT. And again, evaluate their tear film. With multifocal lenses, you want to avoid, again, my, low myopes, minus one to minus three, because their near vision is not going to be as sharp as they are used to. Patients with corneal or retinal problems, poorly controlled dry eyes, people who drive, like to drive a lot at night, who have to drive a lot at night, like truck drivers, because they get distracting rings around lights, and you want to avoid hypercritical patients. You want to avoid the, or fix corneal cylinder above, above about a half an diopter. There are multifocal toric lenses. They're, a little more expensive, but if these patients can afford them, they're certainly a good possibility. You can correct corneal cylinder, uh, low amounts with relaxing incisions, or if you have it available, LASIK or PRK for any residual postoperatively. You need to take time to explain the pros and cons of multifocal lenses. Tell them they can markedly decrease their need for glasses, but not usually completely eliminate them that they lose some sharpness and contrast. They can usually get good distance and near vision, but they have glare or halos, which do usually get better over time. They still may need glasses at times. Many people do report never needing glasses postoperatively with multifocal lenses, but just tell them they can probably do most tasks without glasses. If you tell them that some people don't have to wear glasses, then postoperatively, if they ever have to, they'll think they're a total failure and that you messed up. You need to find out what near tasks they want to do. Do they read a lot? Do they work mostly at intermediate on a computer? Uh, again, all of them work better bilaterally because you do get binocular summer, summation and neural adaptation, but it may take time. Okay. My experience is that my multifocal patients generally have been happy. I've only had to remove a few. Uh, and one way, if they're thinking they're not happy, uh, check their distance and near vision. And then while they're holding a near card, hold up a couple of minus three lenses in front of them and say, this is what you would see if we changed to a monofocal and remove them and say, this is the improvement you get because of getting these fancy lenses. I do like the trifocal, multifocal lenses. You have to be right on with your power calculations and be able to control astigmatism. You have to have a plan to correct if, you're, if your calculations are wrong and they have residual. I have done PRK or piggyback lenses on a few patients. I've had a, two or three patients over the years that I had to remove the multifocal and put in a monofocal because their brain just could not adapt to the double images. Centering a multifocal lens is important. I usually, ro I usually rotate it to a vertically and you want it to be just a little bit nasally remove all the viscoelastic in front of and behind the lens so it doesn't move after you're finished. Then place it slightly nasally and have them look, dim the, light, the microscope light, have them look at it and center the, center the rings and on the light or slightly nasally. Postoperatively, 
Uh, you may have patients who have blurred vision. Uh, this is again monofocal, mac multifocal lenses. Okay, blurred vision usually gets better after the second eye done if you're on with your power and astigmatism correction. Dry eye again is very important, important to treat. If you have a power error, you're going to have to address it when they're stable, generally wait two or three months because you need a spherical equivalent of Plano with much, no more than a half an opter cylinder for best vision, you have to treat any residual astigmatism over that and give the brain time to adjust. And a few of these patients can take a lot of time. Now, if they saw well for some period of time, months or years, then they come in with decreasing vision. You have to make sure it's not a retinal problem or dry eye, uh, but they do see poorly if they get small amounts of posterior capsule opacification. But make sure that there's not another problem before you open the capsule. If it's a problem where you might eventually need a lens exchange, do not open the capsule. That greatly increases your risk or their risk with lens exchange. Look at their macula, make sure they don't haven't developed problems there. And it's possible that you made poor patient selection. People who are hypercritical and a crazy, either you or the patient for doing it. I unfortunately have one like that. I'm nursing at the moment that I probably should not have done. Okay, I'm sorry, let's go back up. I'm missing a couple of slides about uh, my experience with mini monovision, so let me tell you. Uh, mini monovision, I expected to see well for distance, and I expected about 2040 for near. Uh, I have done much better than that. I see 2020 at distance, I see 2025 at near uncorrected, and I only need uh, to wear reading glasses for prolonged reading or clo very small close work. I'm very enthusiastic about monovision, either full monovision or mini monovision. I think you can greatly decrease people's need for glasses just using monofocal lenses and without costing them a lot of money. Okay, let's go through the questions again. And we have question one. There we go. Do most postoperative cataract patients prefer to be left slightly hyperopic, slightly myopic, moderately myopic, or emetropic? Okay, let's see what your answers are. Can we have that, Gandhar? Okay. 96% said slightly myopic. I think you're exactly right. Okay, question two. At what level does residual astigmatism begin to cause blur? One diopter, half a diopter, one and a half diopters, quarter of a diopter. Okay, let's see your answers. Okay. Yeah, half a, di half a diopter or more begins to cause some blur. Three quarters of a diopter or more definitely does. So uh, one and a half diopters, they're going to get a significant blur. One diopter, they will get some. But you want to try to have half a diopter or less. Okay, let's have the next one. How much difference in refraction between eyes and isometropia begins to cause symptoms? One diopter, one and a half diopters, two diopters, two and a half diopters. Okay, let's look at the answers. 
most people will notice it at two diopters or more. That's, that's right, that's good. And because you get an image size difference and it's hard to fuse. Question four, in what, who, what patients should you not use generally multifocal lenses? Dry eye syndrome, corneal dystrophy, macular degeneration, or all of the above. And the answers. Exactly. And you need to be very cautious with multifocal lenses. Um, people who are good candidates, and particularly who hate to wear glasses, generally will do very well with them. Uh, the ones that you, if you pick that are not good candidates and have problems can take up an awful lot of time and effort. Okay, now we had some questions before that were, uh, that were put in. Okay, I, whoops. I think you have specific surgical correction. Oh, I'm sorry. How early can we intervene uh, in patients who are myopic or hypermetropic? Uh, generally want to have people who are having significant cataract symptoms, glare, blur, difficulty with tasks that they need to do. There's no specific number. It just depends, I think, more on symptoms than anything than that. Uh, is there possibilities to avoid glasses after this? Yes, several. And uh, mini monovision, monovision, or multifocal lenses all can make people largely glasses free. What do I do about astigmatism? Uh, make sure what the corneal astigmatism is preoperatively. Sometimes there's not good correlation between refractive and uh, corneal cylinder, you want to try to correct the corneal cylinder because you're removing the lens with any astigmatic change it has, which is often significant. Uh, my opinion about extended depth of focus lenses, uh, I have not had very good luck with them. Uh, I have had good distance and intermediate vision, but a fair number of complaints about near vision and people have to uh, have had to often wear uh, reading glasses a lot. How to make people glare free. Uh, if you get out the natural, if you get out the cataract that often helps a great deal with glare. It took care of mine completely. And I was blinded driving at night needing a car before I got up the courage to have surgery. Okay, surgical options in terms of laser keratoplasty for successfully treating presbyopia, not that I'm aware of. Uh, patient satisfaction, brands of available lenses that can be used. Uh, all the lenses that are available currently, I think, are good as far as optical qualities. You just may have to pick different lenses for different fixation needs. Uh, best option for presbyopia correction, that depends on the individual patient and what their needs are for distance, near, and intermediate vision. But people do generally do most of the things that we do now at near, so it's a great deal of help to have some near vision. In my case, uh, let's say I'm 20-20 distance, 20-25 near without glasses. If I correct my non-dominant eye, which is a minus one, to distance my near vision binocularly drops to 2070. And that's not very helpful near vision. Okay, people with presbyopia aren't much, uh, don't often want to have uh, surgery. Uh, in India, how can we increase their awareness? Uh, Generally, once they get enough cataract that they are, need to see better, uh, the majority of people 
will eventually decide to have surgery. Now this is changing tremendously. I've seen that over the last 30 years. Uh, the way that we could correct cataracts when I started this was with glasses, aphakic glasses and no intraocular lenses. Uh, as we got intraocular lenses and people began to see that people got good vision with them, that just greatly increased people's willingness to have surgery earlier. And I think we can continue to do that by doing good surgery. Our happy patients who see well are our best advertisement and the best salespeople for other people to get surgery. Okay, if a minus five diopter myope wishes to have intermediate clear and near vision, what kind of intraocular lens would I suggest? Um, I think we went through that pretty well. Your choices are multifocal lenses. Again, the trifocal has worked best for the, for the multifocal lenses I've seen. Monovision or near or mini monovision work well in many people. Uh, is there a method for correction of presbyopia with uh, laser? Not that has been proven to be useful as far as I'm aware. Okay, what about halos in multifocals? They all have some halos. Uh, you need to tell people that in almost all of them, if, unless they get fixated on them, they will get less over time. And if you tell them, yes, that's normal, show them that the, the advantage of the multifocal by showing them what they'd be able to see at near without it, with minus three lenses, uh, and try to have them be patient. Most of them are happy. What's the difference between spheric and aspheric? Uh, you get peripheral aberration in high plus lenses, and uh, our eyes have some spherical aberration. The aspheric lenses, the minus aspheric lenses, which are mostly what are used now, give you better depth of field and a little sharper vision. Uh, can I explain more about monovision planning? Okay, I uh, have people who, someone who has significant cataracts in both eyes, uh, find out what their visual needs are. Most of the time, they need to be able to see fairly well at near. Uh, if they are not good candidates or can't afford a multifocal lens, I would explain to them about making their non-dominant eye a little bit nearsighted uh, and that that does give them a much better range of vision that if they're going to do very detailed close work for any period of time, they will need reading glasses, but that can greatly decrease their need to wear reading glasses all the time for close work. How do you decide which is the dominant eye? Number of ways. Uh, you can stand 15 or 20 feet away and uh, just have them point, hold up your finger, have them point to your finger and see which eye lines up with their finger. Uh, I use a card which has a hole in the center. I have them hold it out at arm's length and look at my finger uh, with, or look at me with both eyes open and then bring the card in until it's against their face and they'll bring it in to the dominant eye. Those are two good ways. There are a number of others. Do ophthalmologists ever choose multifocals for themselves? Yes. Uh, I would have if I'd had good, a good cornea. Uh, they, they are good enough now that I definitely think they work well in people who want to be glasses free as much as possible, particularly with the new trifocal intraocular lenses. Okay, uh, the advantage of the trifocal intraocular lens is it gives decent intermediate vision and a lot of us spend a lot of time in computers or other things at arm's length. Uh, with the bifocal lenses, uh, you, with the usual add of uh, three, which actually is about a two and a half effectively, uh, they get generally good distance and near vision, but there's an area in intermediate arm's length vision that's not quite clear. They either have to get further away or closer. So. Uh, 
uh, am just currently using the trifocal lenses in people who want multifocals. Do I measure pupil size when you do multifocals? Uh, not usually, no. Uh, I measure pupil size in people who are going to do laser corneal correction refractive, but uh, not in patients with intraocular lenses. We note it, but uh, don't usually measure it. Okay, if many monovision patients need to use near ad glasses, they generally do fine just with over the counter readers. Uh, correction with uh, a prescription works a little better. I have both, and I'm a little bit clearer if I use uh, my near correction in each eye. Good question. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. Hope that's been useful. Think about monovision. Try not to leave people hyperopic. They're going to be much happier if they have some near vision. I have been amazed how much near vision I have just with a minus one uh, under correction in my non-dominant eye. Thank you.